Hi, it's DeWire. It is August the 3rd, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the betting lines that have been released on Anthony Joshua against Daniel Dubois. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, we're betting early here because the lines will adjust closer to the fight and I personally don't believe that you're going to get these odds. Let's talk about what the odds are. Anthony Joshua, minus 435, simply to win. Daniel Dubois, a plus 316. Again, a plus 316. That means that if these guys fought 4.16 times, the casino is telling you that Dubois would only win one of those 4.16 times. The over-under is seven and a half rounds. Believe it or not, on the under seven and a half rounds, you're getting a minus 107. So let's ask the question, right? Anthony Joshua, minus 435. How can we lower these odds, tailor our bet, so we have a better chance of victory? Here's the bet I'm recommending. Because Dubois is offensively blessed, and he is, right? Don't judge him completely on the Joe Joyce fight or on the Usyk fight, right? I'll agree. There are some nights when Dubois has come out and hasn't been his best. I'll agree with that. What I want people to do is to judge him on the Ergovic fight. Judge him on the Gerald Miller fight, right? This is a guy who can stand his ground. This is a guy who has hand speed, has power, is to hand it has the kind of sudden power where during the Ergovic fight there were certain moments where Dubois lowered a shoulder you heard pop and you thought oh no is this fight over right let's also point out something else I'm talking about the offensive side of the ledger let's talk about the defensive side of the ledger the Kevin Lorena fight what's Dubois doing on the canvas early in that fight, right, early, the Ergovic fight, folks, you know, how do I put this, Ergovic let a grand opportunity go, he hit Dubois with so many right hands, that I'm not sure if I've seen a fight recently, where a heavyweight has landed that much right-handed leather, you understand that Anthony Joshua is a blessed puncher with a blessed right hand. If Dubois gets hit the number of times Ergovic hit him by Anthony Joshua with the same punch, I don't believe this fight makes it to the midway point of the eighth round. That's what an under seven and a half is. And understand, rather than a minus 435, on AJ, if he were to deliver on the under seven and a half rounds, you would get the win at a minus 107. But this bet has other parts. Let's talk about the first two. The part I've personally loaded up on, because I think the odds are ridiculous, is the Dubois plus 316. Folks, you know, I know Dubois lost a couple of fights, right? But <laughs> a guy with this skill set should never be a plus 316. I'm loading up on that because I believe as we get closer to fight day, these odds are going to radically change, right? I have a taste of the under seven and a half. That's my hedge. I have it set up where if Joshua gets the stoppage before the midway point of the eighth round, I'm good. 
but understand the real bonanza. If Dubois gets the stoppage on Joshua before the midway point of the eighth round, folks, you're in the penthouse. You will have hit on both the under and on the plus 316. But there's more. And these are called round group bets. Remember that, round group bets. Remember, the under we're taking is the seven and a half rounds. Let's say I think this fight's going to linger. Let's say I recognize that Robert Hellenius made it to the seventh round against Anthony Joshua. Right? Vladimir Klitschko. Better fighter defensively than Daniel Dubois. Right? That's at least the Vladimir who was with Emmanuel Stewart. Right? He made it to the later part of the fight. Right? Carlos Tackham hung around against AJ. There are a few guys who have hung around against AJ, if not gone the distance. Jermaine Franklin, for example. Right? If you want more rounds with AJ, the round group bets. Understand you already have the midway point of the eighth round. You can get AJ. Not at a minus 435, but AJ in rounds 7 through 9 at a plus 319. Right? That would be a bet that I bet more on than AJ rounds 10 through 12 at a plus 374. In other words, I think the most likely outcome is Anthony Joshua by stoppage. Because Joshua isn't a George Foreman, in other words, he doesn't come in and try to impose himself on you, right? He's not that guy. This is the strategic guy who's really more of a counter than a lead. I know he stopped in Ganu in the second round, right? I'm aware Joshua has fights. He stopped Charles Martin early. I know Joshua has the punching power to come across the ring, has the size, right, to impose himself. But that's not the personality I see. In the comment section of this YouTube video, tell us the personality you see. I think Joshua, understanding that he's not fighting an MMA guy who has just come over, that he's actually fighting a professional boxer who hits hard like him with both hands, I think Joshua's going to be tentative in the very early rounds. I'm expecting Joshua to get a stoppage in the middle of the fight. That's, of course, if Joshua wins the fight. Because, and I believe we're all going to learn this, both of these guys are British. No one roots for Goliath. If this is a pitched battle, and it gets to round eight, round nine, and the crowd senses that Dubois is very much in the fight, I'm expecting the crowd to turn on Joshua, to flock to Dubois. It's nothing against Joshua. It's just that fans love underdogs. I think the feeling with Dubois is that he's been through rough times and he's just finding himself. Right? So, just to understand, the bets I'm recommending here, Dubois, plus 316, that's the big bet to make right now, in my opinion. Not because I think he's going to win the fight. It's simply because it's mispriced. You're really betting odds. You're not trying to pick winners. You're really betting odds, situations. Dubois, plus 316, I believe, is the big bet here. The second biggest bet is the under seven and a half rounds. Let's be clear here. Since Joshua has been with Ben Davison, he has looked spectacular. Otto Wallen, a guy who has been in, a guy who beat Gassiev, for crying out loud, a guy who went the distance with Tyson Fury. In other words, Joshua was not the first elite fighter Otto Wallen had fought. 
And yet Otto Wallen decided to retire in that fight. That's the heat Joshua is bringing with this trainer. Of course, we know Francis Ngannou dropped multiple times early. Right? If a shootout happens here, if Dubois comes out like he did in the Ergovic fight, that's Dubois' last fight, and if he has both guns blazing, he's throwing both hands, big shots, right? Not jabbing and moving backwards. No, it's front foot. Hey, player, I'm here. You know, the time is now. Let's do this here. You show me what you have because I'm going to empty the tank here, right? If Dubois comes out like he did against Ergovic, and by the way, on my scorecard, Ergovic's winning that fight, right? But Dubois takes a lot of shots. That works, as it did for Joe Joyce for years, until it stops working, right? As it did for Joe Joyce in the ninth round against Derek Chisora, let's be real here, right? As it did for Joe Joyce against Zhili Zhang in the rematch, chins get dented. My point is simply this. If Dubois comes out and wants a shootout with Anthony Joshua, if he brings out the lion in Joshua, you'll be happy that you have the under seven and a half. If the fight involves a lot of steering, <laughs> a lot of tentativeness, uh, Joshua showing the back foot he showed in the rematch against Andy Ruiz. Guys measuring themselves. Might even have some Prubat Pulev Joshua in it. Where Joshua decks Pulev early, then takes his time finishing the fight. Okay, at that point, understand. We have Joshua by stoppage all 12 rounds. Because we've invested a little bit. In the 7-9 to nine prop, that's your third biggest bet. And in the 10-12, to 12, Joshua by KO prop. Those are the bets I like right now, but I need for people to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes to distance, and if, in my opinion, the cash cow of the heavyweight division wins by decision. You lose it all. I'm willing to take that risk because I see two blessed punchers here. I see guys who can knock you out with either hand. Right? I believe this fight is in the UK. I believe it's going to be emotional. I believe Dubois is mispriced of the two Dubois is the most inconsistent because even when Joshua went the distance against Franklin, Joshua was looking slick in the ring at times, right? Uh, the Dubois who comes out against Lorena, I don't know who that was. <laughs> right? He's getting hit. He's looking at his corner, confused. The fight's in the UK. You're like, my goodness. You know, then, of course, you get to the end of the fight. Suddenly, a different person shows up. And, of course, Dubois got the stoppage on Lorena. And you were thinking, where did this guy come from? You see Dubois against Usyk. What was going on in the latter part of that fight? Dubois is fighting for the heavyweight championship. What, what, you know, no urgency and stuff like that. Then you see the Dubois against Ergovic, right, who I think would give Usyk all he could handle, right? And Dubois comes out and he's firing. And understand, Ergovic's landing. And in the middle of a rainstorm, Dubois continues throwing. I'm expecting that guy to show up. And if that guy shows up, there's no way in hell he should ever be a plus 300 against anybody in the heavyweight division. Right? The key is, Dubois has to show up as the best version of himself. Right? And with Joshua, all I can say is this. I saw Joshua against Dillian White. The first fight, we need to remember it. White comes out, White looks good. First off, White knew Joshua, right? White beat Joshua in the amateurs. White came out, White looked good. White wasn't afraid. White's throwing a jab. 
right then suddenly Joshua and it takes a few minutes this is a different personality right this isn't foreman this isn't listed right suddenly Joshua shows up in the second round right suddenly you notice Joshua is starting to open up there's a lion in Joshua I believe if the Dubois of the Ergovic fight shows up, I believe he's going to drag the lion in Joshua out. You didn't see the lion the first few rounds against uh, Alexander Povetkin. Right then, suddenly the lion showed up, right? Finished off, you know, Povetkin, spectacular fashion. Both of these guys have that lion in them. I think that ferocity is not going to allow this fight to make it past the midway point of the eighth round. If it does, I'm good because I got over a plus 300. On Dubois, if he wins at any time in this fight, I'm good. Right? On the Joshua side, okay. If the under passes, I still have these round prop bets at pretty good odds. Again. 7 to 9, I got it, plus 319. I'm going to bet more on that. Then I am Joshua 10 to 12 at plus 374. In other words, I'm expecting this fight to not make it past the end of the ninth round. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Tell us how you're playing it. I'm not going to pay a minus 435 for Joshua. I like the minus 107 on the under seven and a half rounds. What I'm really hoping for is that Daniel Dubois shocks the world. Not only wins the fight, that's a plus 316, but does so in the first seven and a half rounds. Those are my thoughts. Keep in mind again, Otto Wallen goes the distance against a front foot heavy Marat Gassiev. Right, goes the distance against Tyson Fury, who's on the inside, because it's Valen who cuts Tyson Fury. You remember that. So, Valen is dealing with a front foot Fury. He goes the distance. Against AJ, after a few rounds, <laughs> Valen said, nah, 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 I, this is not for me, player. Right, he and his corner decided, no boss, basically. Think about it. Nganu didn't even have that opportunity to quit. Right? Look at the fighter and the trainer together. Right? Lennox Lewis found Emmanuel Stewart and was a different fighter because of that. Right? Joshua may have found his guy. The seven and a half here looks a little bit too high to me. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.